Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. Presenting Cary Grant and Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blanding. In a new series based on Eric Hodgins' best-selling novels, Mr. Blandings Builds His Dream House and Blanding's Way. Did you know that TWA Skyliners in 1950 flew more than 61 million miles, or the equivalent of 2,440 trips around the world? You love to fly, high up in the sky, you ride the airways, starry stairways, smoother and swifter, flying so long, and the best way to fly, T-W-A. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, with Gail Gordon as Bill Cole. For every man, there is one name out of the past that will always strike a responsive chord. For some, it's Dorothy. For others, it's Lois. For still others, it could be even Matilda. But for Jim Blandings, it's... Well, let's listen. As Jim and his wife, Muriel, are just finishing breakfast. The telephone rings, Jim answers, and the voice of his friend, Bill Cole, says, Jim, guess who's in town? How should I know? Who? Gloria Pickett. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Jim, say something. I can't. I'm still vibrating. (laughs) Imagine, after all these years, Gloria Pickett. (laughs) Bill, Bill... Don't say that name again. I'm not strong enough. Jim, what's that noise? Noise? Uh, you heard it too? That noise is the toaster, dear. The spring is broken. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Who did you think it was? I hate to tell you. Listen, what's going on there? Are you talking to me or not? Oh, sure, Bill. Go ahead. Well, the Gloria is opening here in a Broadway show. She bills herself as Lily Lamar. Have you seen her picture in the paper this morning? No. I'll look for it. It's on page 14, next to Believe It or Not. <laughs> How would you like to see the real thing? Lily phoned this morning and wants to see you. Okay if I bring her out? Great, Scott, no! Don't bring her here! Don't bring who here, Jim? Uh, why, um... <clears throat> Bill has a kitten he wants to bring out, but we don't want her. <laughs> why? Why, she might be a nice pet for the children. Not this kitten. <laughs> <laughs> I meet you for lunch. You're coming into town, aren't you? Yeah, but I promised Mr. Guider I'd help him out on the Red Cross drive. Oh, then you've got to talk to Lily. She could probably donate a lot of clothes. She hardly uses any. (laughs) Muriel and I are coming into town. We are taking a couple to lunch. Oh, anyone I know? I don't even know them myself. Some couple named Davis. They're giving the Red Cross a check, and Muriel and I are supposed to charm the decimal point over a few places. Well, I guess I'll have to lunch with Lily alone. Good luck with your promoting. Good luck with yours. Goodbye, Bill. And they say that women gab on the phone. What were you and Bill talking about so long? Nothing important. Just a lady we once knew at school is visiting in town. One of your teachers? Mm, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, dear, did you see the morning paper? It's right here on the table. Thank you. Let me see. Page 14. Mm. Muriel, that toaster has got to be fixed. (laughs) Jim mentioned a luncheon appointment with a Mr. and Mrs. Davis. This happy couple lived their perpetual honeymoon in an apartment in Midtown, New York. At the moment, we find them at breakfast in their usual gay, affectionate mood. Meet, if you will, Popsy and Bunny. Look, Bunny, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times. Don't talk to me till noon! Don't talk to me till noon! Don't talk to me till noon! You didn't used to feel that way. So? Funny what a couple of years of marriage will do. What a couple of years of marriage has done to you ain't funny. <laughs> Can you have it quiet? Oh, no, no, no. I'm quiet like a mouse. I'm reading, I'm reading. You must ain't moving. 
children? Let me see what you're staring at. I might have known. The curvaceous Lily Lamora. Well, it just happens that I happen to be glancing at a picture. So glancing. Your eyeballs are moving back and forth over that picture like it was printed in Braille. <laughs> what a quite looking at that Lamar. Oh, brother, she is loaded with glamour. Glamour? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Believe me, what she's got, I've got. Yeah, but she's got it where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> what, what time is it? Eleven o'clock. Oh, yeah, well, then we'd better get moving if we we're going to be in time for that lunch date. Go take the hardware store out of your hair. Who are we eating with? The Blandings. You remember them. We looked at their house one time. How come we're having lunch with them? I don't know. What's talk to me about the money I'm going to give to the Red Cross? You're giving? Yeah. What's the Red Cross got on you that you got to buy them off? <laughs> I am not buying them off. I am making a philanthropic contribution. A philanthropic contribution? Yeah. What's that mean? <laughs> means it's deductible. <laughs> Tom, will you quit asking me those questions and go get dressed? Okay, okay. And uh, what would your highness like me to wear? Something that covers you completely. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I'm afraid we're late, and it's my fault for taking so long. How old are you, Trifle, dear? It's worth it. You look adorable. Why, darling, how nice of you to say so. Oh, do you realize you've been complimenting me ever since this morning when Bill called? I have? Yes. It almost seems as though you're trying to prove something. Stop making good guesses. <laughs> Mr. Blandings and, uh, and Madame. Oh, hello, Albert. Good afternoon, Albert. Uh, Madame, you look exquisite today, uh, if uh, you will permit me saying so. That's what I like about this restaurant. I don't know about the food, but Albert serves such wonderful adjectives. Albert, we're expecting to meet someone here. A uh, Mr. and Mrs. Davis, have they arrived? Ah, uh, mon Dieu, have they arrived? Oh, but uh, I forget myself. Uh, they are friends of yours? No, no, as a matter of fact, we don't even know them. What are they like? Uh, may I uh, speak my mind uh, freely? Of course. Mon Dieu. Mais cette femme, elle est la plus épouvantable dans tout le monde. Mais sacré bleu. What does that mean, Jim? Cherchez la stinker. <laughs> Man, he tells the waiter to bring scotch and water for him and for his wife. Well, that seems a natural thing to do. But, madam, you do not understand. He takes the scotch and he gives the water to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they, Albert? Right over there, in the alcove. Where? Oh, I see them. Jim, look. Where? There, the purple shirt next to the orange plaid dress. <laughs> they can't be the ones we're meeting. Oh, they are, though. I knew I knew that name, Herman Davis. They're the ones who came to look at our house that time. Mm. You remember? You introduced me, and the first thing she said was, Hiya, honey. You really like your hair that way? <laughs> Perhaps you would like uh, another table or even to leave. Uh, I would not blame you, monsieur. No, but I'm afraid we've got to see them. It's our duty. They're going to make a big donation to the Red Cross, we hope. If they offer to give blood, oh, it's away. <laughs> now, uh, come on, take us to the table. Uh, right this way, uh, Mr. Man. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> hey, hello, Blanding. It's a pleasure to get here. Oh, hello, Mr. Davis. And Mrs. Davis. Muriel, you remember Mr. and Mrs. Davis, don't you? Of course. How are you? It's nice to see you, ma'am. The same hairdo. Funny about your hairdo. It don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honey, you need a little flash. Why don't you dye it? Jim violently abhors dyed hair. Pussy's crazy about it, too. <laughs> Especially blonde. Uh, how do you like the color of my hair? Very nice. All of them. <laughs> well, I think we'd better order. Albert. Uh, we wish you. We'd like to order now. Mrs. Davis, have you decided yet? I can't make up my mind. <laughs> Gee, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. <laughs> Sounds like if she already did. <laughs> Well, that was a very 
nice lunch, wasn't it? I thought so. I'm sorry. I think it's a clip joint. Why, Mr. Davis? Well, look at the crummy little cup of coffee they give me. There ain't enough in it for two swallows. <laughs> but you ordered a dummy dash. Well, of course. I'm nuts about cheese and crackers. <laughs> I bow to your unanswerable argument. Now, if you ladies don't mind our talking a little business for the Red Cross. Oh, hey, uh, hey, look, I, um, uh, I, I, I didn't think that we'd talk about that here. No? No, you see, well, uh, uh, we need to go someplace where we can really concentrate, you know. Check out a lot of problems. Yeah, like how you're going to ditch us girls. Who said anything about ditching you? Just thought that you girls might like to go shopping. Listen, Herman Davis, if you think you're going to... Oh, I can hardly wait, although I'd like a chance to. <laughs> you go ahead, Jim, and we'll meet you at the office at five. Apostle, you, you sure this is business? Now, Bonnie, how could you ask such a question? What else could it be? Well, if it's on two legs, it could be a woman. And if it's on four legs, it could be two women. <laughs> well, come on, Mr. Blanny. Uh, yeah, we'll pay the check on the way out. Guys. All right. We'll meet you at five. Goodbye, dear. Bye, darling. Well, your wife is a bit suspicious, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. How do you like the nerve of that? That is the most ridiculous thing that I ever heard of. I sympathize. Now, uh, shall we go to my office to discuss our business? Business? <laughs> Don't tell me that you fell for that corny line. Oh, get wise, Blandings. Uh, a wise? Well, sure. Hey, look, look. I, I got us two front row tickets to Dolls on Parade. <laughs> Mr. Davis, are you suggesting that we have abandoned our spouses to revel in dubious pleasures? Heavens, no. <laughs> We just ditched them to live a little. <laughs> oh, boy, they got a doll in this show that is called Lily Lamar. And Lily Lamar? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Davis, I don't think I should go. I don't think I'd enjoy that show. Now, look, Blandings, your voice has changed. You'll enjoy the show. <laughs> the, the Red Cross business. Now, wait, please, please. Charity begins at home. And after we've lived a little, then I will be happy to give you a check for my contribution. Are you coming? Well, in that case. All, all right. right. Okay. Start shaking, Lily. We are on the way. <laughs> Say, what's the United States mean to you? What does it mean to people in foreign lands? How would you tell those people about our country? Well, friends, I'm sure you'll agree that one of the best ways to get people from other countries acquainted with this vast, wonderful land of ours is to let them see it firsthand. Let them see it in action. And TWA is now doing just that. Recently, invitations were sent to a group of overseas newspaper men in England, France, in fact, all the important European countries, as well as those of the Near East and India. Invitations to see free enterprise actually at work here in the United States in the fields and in the factories, in the small towns and in the big cities. And at this very moment, these distinguished journalists are flying from Paris to New York on a trip that will show them the real United States, show them our way of doing things, the tremendous benefits of a commerce where freedom of expression, freedom of enterprise is the rule, a rule that has made this nation the proud standard-bearer of democracy among all the nations of the earth. And you know... Even before they set foot on U.S. soil, they'll have a practical example of democracy at work. And that's in this TWA flight. A flight that in itself stands for freedom of trade, free competition. A business operating under just government regulations for the common good of the people. A flight that not only promotes the exchange of ideas between countries, but promotes the exchange of trade as well. And thus, TWA, Trans World Airlines is proud to support our State Department's stirring campaign of truth. Through this flight, the truth about our land and our priceless freedom of enterprise will be brought to millions of people throughout the world. Now, the second act of Mr. and Mrs. Blanding. 
starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. When Jim Blinding's client, Popsy Davis, told his wife, Bunny, and Jim's wife, Muriel, that they were going to have a business meeting, it turned out to be what might charitably be called a little white lie. As a matter of fact, the white on this one isn't quite dry yet. For here they are with front row tickets still clutched in their hot little hands at the intermission of the Broadway show Dolls on Parade. A show which happens to feature one Lily Lamar, an old school friend of Jim's. Well, what do you say? Let's go out and stretch our legs. Yeah, hey, I can hardly stand up. These theater seats are moitered. How can you tell? Huh? You only stand on the front edge of yours. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you think them gals jump around on their toes there, those, those, uh, ballerinas? <laughs> Ballerinas. Ballerinas, schmallerinas. <laughs> Did you get the way they jump around? <laughs> hey, you'd have to trip one of them to catch up with her. <laughs> of course, you could keep a rope and lasso her. Yeah, like the Tennessee Williams guy. <laughs> or hop along Shakespeare. <laughs> Boy, the doll that I would like to latch on to is that Lily Lamar. Oh, oh yeah. I could be very happy with a dish like that. <clears throat> Mr. Davis, aren't you forgetting something? Like what? Your wife, Bunny. Please, I'm not well. <laughs> all the pictures of all the cuties who were in the program, mister. Hey, the Boston, we ain't tourists. You ain't here to listen to music. <laughs> hey, if it ain't Popsy the Pigeon. Well, if it ain't my old pal, Freddy the Fink. Hey. Hey, who's the square? The landing's the bumpkin. <laughs> hey, tell me, Freddy, what are you doing peddling programs? I heard that you was running out of book on Detroit. I, I thought you was in with the big boys. I was, I was. But I didn't get called up by the chief off a committee and it ruined my standing. <laughs> Hey, how do you like the show? What do you think of Lily? Oh, that Lily, hey, what a dish. Huh? Ooh, would I like to meet her. Huh. So, so why don't you? Come backstage with me and I'll give you a knockdown. Now, nah, wait, look, don't tease an old pal. Who's teasing? Come on, back, right now. You can see the rest of the show from backstage. Yeah, holy smoke. Hey, Blanding's... Oh, what a break, huh? I, uh, don't think we'd better go. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you nuts or something? No, but I, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm catching a cold, and you know how drafty those backstages are. Hey, look, Blanding's... With Lily Lamar around, you ain't gonna catch no cold. <laughs> Come on, let's go back to Ain't fun shopping, Muriel, honey. Yes, men don't know what they're missing. Do you think I should buy this dress? Isn't it a bit low around the neckline? Oh, I don't know. I like them to expose a little. Well, that one doesn't expose a little. It gives away the whole plot. <laughs> Say, uh, that dress that you're trying on is murder. The sales girl had some nerve even showing it to you, I'll say. This is the dress that I wore in here today. Oh. Oh, sorry, hon. If I'd known that rag was yours, I never would have said it was a rag. <laughs> That's very sweet of you. But wherever did you get it? This is a Christian Dior. A what? A Christian Dior. Oh, bought it at a church bazaar. <laughs> Say, honey, not that I'm the kind that's interested in such things, but there was a very handsome gentleman giving us the once-over. Where? Over there. Why, that's Bill Cole. Bill, what are you doing here? Just admiring you from afar, Muriel. You look delightful in that dress. She bought it in a church bazaar. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Davis, I'd like you to meet Bill Cole. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. My phone number is Circle 28530. <laughs> Muriel? Um, Mrs. Davis is the wife of a business client of Jim's. Oh, thanks for answering a question I couldn't ask. <laughs> Well, Bill, what are you doing here? Oh, just picking up a package for an old friend. Oh, the one from out of town. How sweet and thoughtful. Mr. Cole? Oh, over here, miss. Here's your change, sir. And here's your package. I have the negligee gift wrapped as you wish. Oh, uh, thank you. And thank you for your continued patronage. <laughs> Gee, Mrs. Blanding, you have such interesting friends. Bill... Do you always buy negligees for your old school teachers? 
Uh, well, all right. I'll confess. I'm just picking this up as a favor for Lily Lamar. Who? Actually, Gloria Pickett. She's an old friend of mine and... Uh, uh, Jim's too, perhaps? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> and she's not the school teacher Jim mentioned. Well, if Jim said that she... she well, I'm not sure that that's... Uh, then on the other hand, he might have... Uh, Muriel, how are the children? <laughs> you know, I'd like to see this sub, Lily. As a matter of fact, I'd be interested in seeing her myself. Well, I'm going to deliver this package to her dressing room now. Why don't you ride over with me? So have we got time? Oh, we got an hour till we meet the boys. Well, let's be on our way. Gee, wait till Popsy finds out I met Lily Lamar. <laughs> and wait till Jim finds out I met her. Yes, it will probably come as quite a shock to both of them. Well, here's the dressing room. Hey, Lily. Lily, got a couple of stage door Johnnies to see you. I am not a stage door Johnny. Just a second, I'm changing. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm ready. Guess she doesn't have much to change. <laughs> They are, Lil. This is Popsy Davis, an old buddy of mine. Oh, well. How do you do? Mm, never so good as right now. <laughs> it's so hot in here. <laughs> and the square in the corner here is Blanding's. Oh, well, how nice. What was that name again? Dinwiddie. Horace Dinwiddie. <laughs> Jim. Jim Blanding's. Hello, Gloria. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't tell me that you were a friend of hers? She's not exactly a friend. Oh, Jimmy boy. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, honey, let me just hug you and hug you and hug you. Ah. <laughs> well, she's not exactly an enemy either. Oh, Jim. Jim, baby, how do I look to you? Nice, Lily. You look nice. Oh, thank you, Jim. He says, nice. She likes it. <clears throat> All these years, I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm going back to hopscotch and work my way up again. <laughs> well, it's, it's been nice seeing you, Lily, but I'm afraid I must run along. Oh, but Jimmy boy, you can't just run away now. I want to hear all about you. <laughs> well, I'm... Pottery of that dressery room. Amazing the way she blacked his eye. <laughs> I still don't understand how she did it. Well, she shinned up his leg and hit him with a cold cream jar. <laughs> Imagine doing a thing like that. Oh, well, we shouldn't criticize. Actually, it, I guess it just shows she loves him. What do you mean that? Well, of course. Muriel, where are you going? For a stepladder and a jar of cold cream. <laughs> Gary Grant and Betsy Drake will be back with us in just a moment. Friends, did you know that TWA is the only airline that goes all the way across the U.S. and overseas to Europe, the Middle East, and India? Yes, you can board a TWA plane in 60 cities in the United States and fly to London, Paris, Rome, and other world centers abroad. And say, just ask anyone who travels a lot and you'll find out that this one airline service is mighty important. It means you buy only one ticket. You enjoy the same courteous service all the way, and you don't have to worry about complicated connections. So fly the finest. Fly TWA. Transworld Airlines. Next time you plan a trip for business or pleasure, see your friendly travel agent or call your nearest TWA office. You want to fly high up in the sky. You ride the airwaves, starry stairways, smoother and swifter, flying so long. And the best way to fly, TWA. Here again are Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Come on, answer it, dear. Hello? Hello, Jim. This is Bill. May I speak with Muriel, please? With Muriel? All right. Yeah. It's for you, dear. Hello? Hello, Muriel. Guess who just flew into town on the TWA Constellation? 
Who? Flew all the way to New York from San Francisco in just ten hours and five minutes. Isn't the speed of those TWA constellations amazing? Bill, who just flew into town? And TWA has the world's largest fleet of constellations. Bill, will you please stop teasing me and tell me who came to town? All right. It's an old flame of yours. Bill, don't tell me. That's right. Horace Dinwiddie. (laughs) What is it? Nothing. And please fix that toaster. Muriel, that toaster has been fixed. week, same time, same station, for Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, brought to you by Transworld Airlines. Across the U.S. and overseas, you can depend on DWA. <laughs> Betsy Drake appeared for the courtesy of RKO Pictures and David O. Selden. Watch for the next Selznick release, Gypsy Blood, starring Jennifer Jones and produced in Technicolor. The role of Bill Cole is played by Gail Gordon. Bunny and Popsy Davis were played by Sandra Gould and Sheldon Leonard. Others in our cast were Viola Vaughn, Sidney Miller, Ramsey Hill, and Charlotte Lawrence. Tonight's show is written by Charles Stewart and Mark Rockman, directed by Warren Lewis, and transcribed in Hollywood. Don Stanley speaking.